Hi everybody, I'm Stacy. And I'm your dog Nikki. And, and welcome to Kitty Nomics. <laughs> we are excited because it's Friday and another kids financial literacy with Kitty Nomics and our uber special guest, Mr. Ryan Knight. I love his last name. It's, <laughs> I love his last name. Um, and so we are super excited today. So we'd like to welcome, welcome, welcome everybody on Kittynomics. But before I introduce Mr. Ryan, I'm going to get into Kittynomics, okay? All right. Welcome everybody online so far. Hold on. Okay. I'm going to hope that the chat box is working this week because it should be. Hold on. Let me make sure. Uh, let me make sure that the chat box is working for everyone. Can you guys uh, message in the chat box for me, please? Whoever is online, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's disabled. Okay. I, to me, I just enabled it. I don't know why it keeps on getting disabled. Can you try in the, okay. Hola, hola. Good. There we go. There we go. Awesome. All right. Chat box is live. We are live. All right. Good stuff. Hey, Layla. Hey, Kelsey. Nice. You guys are joining this week. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right, everybody. Welcome to Kittynomics. We would like to welcome all of our new Kittynomics sirs. Is that what we would call them, Kittynomics sirs? I guess so. <laughs> uh, to Kittynomics, if this is your first week on Kittynomics, we would love for you guys to put in the chat box, you're new, and the kids will welcome you online. And of course, welcome back to all of our returning kitties that are here week after week with us. We love you for being here. So thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. So let's get into Kittynomics. What is Kittynomics? What is it about? Wait, can I read it? Yes, but read it slower. <clears throat> Go ahead. Kittynomics will help kids age, a, ages A plus to develop a healthy, healthy relationship towards financial, financial literacy, helping to start off kids on the right path to have a successful financial future. A successful financial future. That's what we want for everybody. That's what we want for everybody out there. That's what I want for her. That's what she wants for me. That's what I want for Mr. Ryan. We want, hey, Micah. We, that's what we want for everybody. So how do you do that on Kittynomics? Because we learn a lot. <laughs> we learn a lot here on Kittynomics. But let's get into some housekeeping items. OK, please remember that every single Kittynomics webinar is recorded. So you will be able to watch this Kittynomics webinar back uh, this evening. And also, please remember that we cannot see or hear any of uh, anybody in our uh, Kittynomics community. So to maintain all of our kids' privacies, hey, Brielle, uh, to maintain all of our kids' privacy. So we communicate everything through the chat box, OK? In the chat box, because we have kids ages 8 to 13, sometimes younger, sometimes older. We want everybody to be very respectful and very kind in the chat box, right? Because sometimes somebody may get something right away and then sometimes you don't, right? But that's okay. That's what Kittynomics is here for. It's here to learn. And sometimes if you need to ask the question again, no problem. Just type it in the chat box and say, hey, Miss Stacy, I asked this question, okay? And then we'll get back to it, okay? And or I'll ask the guest speaker to repeat it, but repeat it in a in a in a different version so that um, you'll hopefully understand it in a new way, okay? Also, please remember in the chat box to maintain privacy, and we want to make sure that we keep a healthy and safe community here on Kittynomics. That nobody types in their ages, right? So I don't want to know exactly how old you are. I just I do call roll call for birthdays, so I do do that, um, but. We don't want to see any personal addresses, any email addresses, any phone numbers, nothing that can personally identify you, okay? Because we want to make sure that you guys try to stay safe in our Kittynomics community, okay? All right. Did I miss anything? Yeah. What? Roll call. Let's do roll call. All right. Where is everybody joining from today? Which country are you joining from? You can type it in the chat box. Let me know. 
which country are you joining from? And let's see, is anybody going to remind me to ask Nikki? Because I forget every week. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure you don't forget now because. Oh, Anaya, you're in Ajax. Woohoo! That's awesome. So are we. <laughs> That's awesome. Ryan Knight, Ajax, Ontario, Canada. Kelsey, I don't, you don't know, Kelsey. Really? You usually have a place. Micah's joining us from England as usual. Hi, Micah. <laughs> and hi to your mom and your sister. <laughs> um, where else? Where else is everybody joining us from today? Who else is online here? Brielle, where are you joining us from? Timmy, where are you joining us from? Timmy, here we go. Universe, Solar System, Earth, North America, Canada, Ontario, GTA, Burlington. <laughs> I always love how she always drills it all the way down. I love it. Layla, North Pole. It is super cold. Out of all the places to pick, you pick the North Pole with Santa. I got it because it's almost Christmas. I'm Almost. It's my favorite. Well, you know, for me, it's like the countdown begins. Like I love Christmas. It's my favorite holiday. Type a one in the chat box or let me know what's your favorite holiday in the chat box. Is it Christmas? Is it Halloween? Timmy says it's almost Halloween. What's yours, Nikki? Um, Easter, Christmas, and Halloween. Easter, Christmas, and Halloween. No, you got to pick one. Got to pick one. Yeah. What's your favorite? Okay, Christmas, then Halloween. Christmas! <laughs> and then Halloween. Let me see. Brielle says Christmas or Halloween. Uh, Layla says Christmas. Um, Ryan says Hall let Halloween, pass first, and then get on to Christmas. I get it. I get it. Micah says Christmas. Kelsey says Halloween, Christmas. Oh, Timmy said, Timolin says Christmas, and then Thanksgiving. Yeah, I like Thanksgiving too. Nothing beats Christmas though. Christmas all the way. Christmas. Nothing beats Christmas to me. I love Christmas. Oh, and Brielle says her birthday. Yes. Yes. Your birthday. Everybody's birthday is always uber special. That's true. Absolutely. Your birthday should be number one, right? <laughs> right? Yes. Your birthday should be number one. So yeah. But then there's Christmas. So yay. <laughs> all right. Speaking about birthdays, did we miss anybody's birthday from the last couple of weeks? Did we miss anybody's birthday? Was it your birthday coming up? Nada. <laughs> Thank you. It's Mickey's birthday coming up. Yeah. Her birthday's coming up the end of October. Uh, Kelsey says, actually Christmas. Yes, okay, that's, that's fine. Oh, your sister. Okay, we gotta wish Ryan's, Mr. Ryan's sister a happy birthday. So in the chat box, happy, happy birthday to you. Oh. Oh, oh. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Layla, it was two months ago. Oh no, two of them, we missed it. Well, happy birthday, Layla. I hope you had a beautiful day and I hope you had a day as fabulous as you are. And I'm sure you did. Micah, yours is on the 20th of October. So it's coming up. All right, so next week we can wish you happy birthday. That is so good. That was so, Brielle was three or four months ago. Was that during the summer or did we did we catch it on Kittynomics? Did we miss it? I hope not. Happy birthday, Brielle. I hope you had a day as fabulous as you are. That is fantastic. It was summer, okay. I love summer birthdays because you always get so many options to do stuff outside. Mine yeah. is in the dead of winter. <laughs> so Oh, there's not a lot of stuff to do. Okay. I missed it. Okay. Sorry, Bial, but we wish you a happy birthday and I hope you had a day as fabulous as you are. Happy, happy B, 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 B related birthday. Happy B, B, B related birthday. That's right. Your birthday was two months ago, two months and 13 days ago. Oh my goodness. All right. We missed a lot of birthdays. Yeah. I ask about birthdays. Okay. I hope you had a birthday as fabulous as you are because I'm sure it was uber special and you had an amazing time. So happy, happy birthday to everybody. All right, now let's get into Kittynomics. That was good. Thanks everybody for roll call. And the love of Christmas. You'll hear me say that over and over again because Christmas is coming. All right. You forgot this about week. me. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. Oh, did I forget about you, yes, roll call? You did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was waiting for them to say something. All right. Okay. Mickey, do your roll call. Where are you joining us? Joining from? Today? I actually have a place today. Where? It's called Sussyland. 
Sussy land. All That's right. where I came from. Sussy land. All right. Okay, cool. <clears throat> yes, Layla, I did forget. Somebody was supposed to remind me. Nobody did. <laughs> Bussy, sussy. <laughs> yeah. That's one of our images, actually. Yes, I see this. That's in the <laughs> anime world. Okay. Anime world. All right. Good job. Good job. All right. Thanks, everybody. Good job, everybody. Good job. All right. Yes, we have Mr. Ryan back on Kittynomics because we love him. And every time Mr. Ryan comes on Kittynomics, he imparts so much knowledge and wisdom and drops so much, you know, things that you can actually use. And, and you can use them right now. So if you go back and watch any of Mr. Ryan's videos on Kittynomics, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about, okay? So you can always go back and watch any of our videos on our Kittynomics YouTube channel. So let me introduce Mr. Ryan Knight. Ryan has built multiple businesses over the last 10 years and spends a great deal of his time leading and mentoring young entrepreneurs. He really does. After starting Detailing Nights, a mobile waterless car cleaning company, Ryan was able to launch his first, first youth entrepreneurship program called Knighthood Academy. Ryan has a deep passion for his community and is one of the co-founders of the Afro-Caribbean Business Network, a nonprofit organization created to help entrepreneurs of African and Caribbean heritage, ACN to not only start businesses, but help other companies grow and become assets for the future generations. Don't we love that? Like, he's so amazing. Everybody give a big Kittynomics round of applause to Mr. Ryan Knight. Look, you got claps in the chat box there, Mr. Ryan. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. Always a pleasure to be on. Thanks for the invite, Stacy and Mickey. Love the Kittynomics crew. Thank you. Thank you for coming back on. We love you here. Thanks. My pleasure. And today, for those that are watching, it's time to really expand our imaginations and think of those businesses that we could start, but not just any type of business, actually a social enterprise. So you might hear the term social enterprise and not really quite understand what it is. But what I want you to brainstorm is if you see an uh, issue in the community that you think should be solved and put it into the chat if you can think of it quick enough, but that issue is something that a social enterprise would solve. So if we think of Kittynomics, Stacy and her daughter thinks of, hey, we want to get financial literacy to the community and to kids, to yourself, and actually doing that within a business is creating a social enterprise. So I'm going to talk today a little bit about my social enterprise, the Detailing Nights, where we do mobile waterless car cleaning, but also talk about the supports that are out there for social enterprises. So as I'm going through, oh yeah, go ahead. I think that's a good question that you did ask the kids to think of, as Mr. Ryan's talking, I want you guys to type it in the chat box. Think of a business, think of an issue, as Mr. Ryan says that you could start because there is an issue or need for it within your community. So for example, Kittynomics, we are helping to solve financial literacy um, because we have a lack of financial literacy um, in, in across all communities, but especially in minority communities. And, our, and what we want to do is educate communities across the globe. So what problem do you, or issue, do you think that you could build a company on solving an issue. Start thinking about that and put in the chat. And Mickey, I want you to think of one too. Okay, make sure. Love, All right, go ahead, Mr. Frank. And I, I did see one already in, uh, talking about environmental, social impacts of toxic waste. Keep oh. that in mind because there are challenges that a person might look at and be like, oh, that's too difficult to tackle. But if we get creative and use a business as a way to support and fix that barrier, that issue in the community, it can be done. So I want you to say to yourself, it's possible. That's what I say to myself when I think of these big issues that are happening all around us. When we set our minds to really solve those issues, it's possible. And the more that we keep working towards it, the more consistency I see out of Kittynomics, the more you realize how possible it is. So I'm gonna share my screen so we can walk through this. So while you're sharing your screen, Mr. Ryan, I'll, I'll see what the kids are typing in the chat. Chat, uh, Tim Lynn, 
uh, she wrote a lack, um, like lack of investment, environmental or decrease of property value, that's social. Kelsey says a bank business. Okay. Ooh, nice. <laughs> Layla says <laughs> environment business. Oh, yes. Yes, for sure. Mickey, you have a, you have a. Um, yeah, I would maybe like to like create a business for like athletes and um, um, charity and people who actually need food and money. Okay, so creating a business around athletes mm -hmm. that can help uh, help to alleviate poverty. Because yeah. she said food and uh, food and what? I well, love that. People who need money. Yeah. Who need money. So help to alleviate poverty. Oh, that's a good one. So one thing that we want to keep in mind, and when we keep saying to ourselves, it's possible, I'm going to touch on a lot of the ways that uh, community organizations and myself, our organization, the Afro-Caribbean Business Network, actually helps you achieve these dreams so you can reduce these barriers. And the government wants to see more businesses like what you're thinking of right now actually uh, amplify and grow. So again, I mentioned uh, my name is Ryan Knight. I run a company called Detail Ignites, which is a social enterprise that provides mobile waterless car cleaning. So what does that mean? So we go to people's houses, we clean their cars without using any water. We have our own solution that you spray onto the car. When you rub it in, it lifts the dirt and then you wipe it off. So think of if you ever see your dad in the garage uh, waxing his car, it's like waxing your car, but you don't have to pre-wash it. And we also use plant-based, eco-friendly cleaning supplies. So our all-purpose cleaner, our carpet cleaner, uh, the car wash is all uh, created through plants. And so we use plant-based cleaning supplies. But there was something happening around me where I realized in our community, there was a lot of youth unemployment. So youth were coming out of school and having difficulty finding jobs, or while they're in school, they were having difficulty finding summer jobs. So when they wanted to go to post-secondary and go to college or university, it was really difficult to pay for it because the jobs that they might be doing during uh, the summer wasn't making enough money for them. And one research statistic that I loved was seeing it's 12 times easier to pull yourself out of poverty with a business rather than just getting a job. So you'll notice, person coming out of school, they go to get a job and they're being told, wait, I need more experience for this job, but the only way to get that experience is to get the job. So they're stuck in this big catch 22 where they can't get hired because they don't have enough experience and they also can't get the job to get the experience. So what we tried to do was create a solution that created a training program built for youth and built around entrepreneurship, but now it gives you experience during the summer of, hey, being part of a team, actually starting your own business, so that when you go to school and graduate, what I like to say is you're battle tested. You have gone through and know what it's like to start a business, so it really puts you a bit elevated above your graduating class because everybody that graduates gonna have that piece of paper that says, hey, diploma in X. But when you can also put business owner beside that, and when you're in interviews, you know what a business owner is thinking about. So you know how to bring value to the team. The, this is the power of entrepreneurship. So I'm a big proponent and big uh, advocate for starting a business. So I wanna be your uh, champion and encourage you to start a business. But it reminds me, I was driving on the 427 here in uh, Toronto and you know, I was stuck in traffic and I got a call and it was from a friend of mine who's a parent and she started talking about her son and her son is so, has so much potential and he was working for this fast food place and she just knew that he could do more. So he came into our program and initially when he was working at his part-time job, he was making about $250 a month. And I was working part-time because they wouldn't give him full-time hours. After going through our program, he was able to start making $500 a week. And after he finished, his confidence grew. I remember we did uh, interviews kind of before we started the program and then after, and you can see his chest up, his chin up, 
just more confidence and he was able to complete dental school. And this is Dene. Uh, I always love telling his story because he, to me, is the reason that we do what we do with our social enterprise. It's being able to talk to a parent, know that a child has so much potential, and then helping them to unlock that potential. So a little bit about what we do. So as I mentioned, we create these products that uh, you can use to clean cars. So students get to work with us in the summer. We give them all the equipment and the supplies that they need and then teach them how to run their own businesses. And so when we talk about a social enterprise, it does need to make money. So we're out there, we talk to clients, we uh, clean their cars and they pay for that service and the business makes money. But then we also get to do this youth entrepreneurship piece and teach entrepreneurship to uh, high school and college students and even students or uh, youth that are out of school. We've worked with some that have come out of detention where we were able to go into a prison here in Brampton and talk to them and coach them on how to start a business so that when they came out, they were able to hit the ground running, one with a job and two with the confidence to start their own business. So these are all the I'll say social benefits that we're able to do because our business is profitable. And what we've been able to see with the students that work with us is instead of, like I mentioned, making that $250 a month, they're actually able to make closer to $25,000 and that is profiting about 8,500. So you'll see, I put 34% profit margin. So one day, and I know some accountants and CPAs come on Kittynomics, when we talk <laughs> about profit, you wanna be able to do the service, run your business, sell your products, and make sure that you make a profit at the end of the day, because that's the money that you get to keep and spend and use it for the, the social issues that you want, or if you wanna buy stuff. I mean, there's nothing against buying things that uh, you're saving up for, but always remember to save and also start to invest. So why is this all important? One thing that I tell myself when I get up in the morning is I look in the mirror and I say, you know, today I can impact somebody's life. Today I can, with any engagement that I have, I can be a positive uh, memory for that person. And so anybody, anytime that I think about what I'm doing with my business, what I'm doing with my family and what I'm doing with my interactions, it's really to create a positive environment. And one thing that I noticed with the youth in our community is they need that experience. And I feel entrepreneurship is an amazing tool that you can use because the, end, the barrier to entry is really low. You can start a business. I remember I started Detailing Nights with $250. I borrowed it from my dad and I did pay him back. So I got that initial money and was able to start just going door to door and asking neighbors, hey, do you need your car cleaned? I would look in the driveway, see a dirty car, be like, hey, I noticed your car hasn't been cleaned in a while. Can I take care of that for you? and just going out and hustling. And now we teach that same uh, concept to the youth that come through our program because it's the act of entrepreneurship that really gives you the experience and the skills, being able to understand how to talk to somebody, how to talk to a client, how to sell yourself and say, you know, this is something that I can do for you. And then you're able to get money for that service. You're able to talk to clients, uh, pitch them on what you can do, deliver the service after they say yes. And then when they see a great job done, they're paying for that service. So they're seeing value, you're getting money for that value and you rinse and repeat. And that is the essence of entrepreneurship. But I wanted to pause and do a bit of a challenge with everybody. So I apologize, I won't be able to see, actually, let me see if I can see the chat. So, so in the chat, Layla just wrote, I'm writing her back. Yes. Layla just wrote, when I'm older, I'm going to work here. Yay. Yeah, that's amazing. I love it. And Nikki just said, I am going to work here. <laughs> hey, we are waiting for you. So since we have some potential nights, some potential detailing nights in the audience. Oh, Timmy says see. me too. <laughs> <Who's there? laughs> that's so good. So I want to see if you could help us with our marketing. So we have three logos that we're going to choose from. So this is uh, the first logo. So in the chat, I want to hear your thoughts on this logo. Um, 
maybe what's missing? What do you initially feel when you see this logo? Uh, what are some ideas that you have around this one? Okay, so they're asking, so Timlin's asking, what does it represent? So TDK is supposed to be the detailing knights. The, Which is the name of, of Mr. Ryan's company that he was yes. just talking about. So Mickey, what do you think? Yeah, what are your initial thoughts on this logo? Uh, like what should be there or? Yeah, what do you think? Is it missing anything? Um, Does it tell you what the company's about? Do you, if you've seen yeah. that, um, like, you know, when you see the McDonald's arches, you know what that's about. Yeah. If you see this, well, you know what it's about. Um, well, it looks like it's kind of like a dealership, a mm. dealership like kind of thing, but it doesn't, like look like it's a cleaning like you know so it doesn't it looks like it's like a from a dealership so it looks like it's from a dealership timolin says um an image should be there so it's like just that. saying that it's missing an image okay and then so let's go to option two so this was the next version what are your thoughts on this uh logo your thoughts on this logo? Let me see. I really, oh. really like it, says Timmy. Layla, maybe some green. <laughs> <It is. laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Mickey, what do you say? Um, it, this gives out way more ideas of what it, it, it is. And mm -hmm. um, it also like it gives out more hints of like what they do, I know. So Mickey says it's more of a representation of what you do. Uh, Brielle says that's good. It shows what it's about. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Timmy says the logo says a lot about your business, which is good. Very good. Okay, here's the last one. So, what are some initial thoughts about this logo? Oh, I like this one. Oh, sorry. Not my. Don't. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Brielle says perfect with a right. cat. Yes, yes. All caps. <laughs> Uh, Mickey says, um, I actually like this one more because it actually, like, it shows way more and it, you, it, like, it, it's way more easier to tell and stuff because it has, right, like, right. yes, so let me see, that's that perfect, so, cars, uh -huh. it, it means that the car is clean and stuff. Oh, yes, that's true, right, because right? you can you see you the that image well. of the cars being done. Yes, okay. so Timlin says, that one is it, perfecto. Um, Layla says, best one ever. Sweet, sweet. So you'll see this was the actual progression of our logos. So when we first started, we had the TDK on a black shield, you know, hey, just getting out the gate. And then we were able to upgrade a little bit to <clears throat> the one with the shield that had the car on it. And fun fact, that is actually a picture of the Acura Integra that I used to drive. And we shaded green so we put it on the logo and then the one that we still drive an integra that was my first car what? that's amazing <laughs> yo i'm still i i vow to still get my integra back i love Me that too. car i love right? that car <laughs> i love that car, I love oh, that car. and then they changed the mod the, the style yeah, not like, the same but that wow. old integra like i love that car that was my first you know, car i loved so it good. that's funny and then, yeah, and then the last logo, that's the one that I, I feel like it's the evolution of what we did. So all that feedback that you were giving, you really were in my head is what we were thinking about as we improved our logo and being able to really think of something new and that will actually tell a story right when they see it. And that's what we get to do in the summer. So when you work with us in the summer, it's really all about marketing. It's all about how do you sell yourself? What are the best ways? What are you saying? And then we start to improve on it. So never feel like the way you are today is the way you're going to stay. The mm -hmm. way that our logo looked that first day, it evolved. And even if you feel like you're bad at business, I've never run a company before, you are not going to stay in that stage. You are going to evolve and always get better. So I always say, the main mission for myself, or that I tell our students is do not quit. A lot of times, you know, they'll start with us and they feel like it might be difficult. And I always say, just don't quit. Getting to the end is better than 
you know, hitting your revenue goals and making X amount of dollars because you going through the experience is actually the win. So never feel like something that's difficult is something to quit on. I always encourage you lean into complexity, lean into things that are difficult because the learning that's going to come from that is way more than anything that's easy for you. And especially you won't learn from anything that you quit. So that's my little PSA. But now, so to give you a little bit of an overview, I was, I've been running this company for over 10 years and a lot of them were graduating our program and now didn't have the support to really keep their entrepreneurship journey going. So that's where we created the, uh, the Afro-Caribbean Business Network. And like I mentioned, uh, just before the show started, we've been going for five years and it was really the, to fill that gap that we want to see Black entrepreneurs figure out what stage they're in and then help them grow their companies. And so right now we've engaged with over 5,000 entrepreneurs and 74% of them we are seeing in our community are females and 91% are the business founders and the CEOs. But what's even more impressive and what I'm more proud of is our ability to partner with other black focused business organizations. So there's over 40 now and that's extended our reach to over 20,000 black entrepreneurs across Canada and even into Africa and into the Caribbean. And the main thing that I want you to remember is when you start a business, there are resources out there to support you. I mentioned there's 40 organizations that support business owners, but we want to encourage you to become a social entrepreneur, but not just to start a business and be out there on your own. You're going to be with a community, with an ecosystem that wants to see you win. And so the pillars that we stand on, of course, entrepreneurship, I feel when you're young, it's the best time to start a business because if the business doesn't work, you still live with your parents. So you have to stay. <laughs> when, you know, when you're growing older and you're kind of, I remember I was laid off from my job uh, yep. back in 2009 and I said, okay, entrepreneurship is for me. I'm going to jump in and it's really sink or swim. But when you're young and I wish in high school, somebody came to class and said, do you know about entrepreneurship? Yeah. I'm going to teach you and coach you how to start yeah. a business this summer. I feel yeah. I'd be way further ahead. So you have that way opportunity. Further. Definitely take it. And as I mentioned, that economic inclusion, entrepreneurship is a low barrier to entry. You can really start with a Shopify store that's free to start and start selling things that are around the house, like back in the eBay days where you just grab things, put them on eBay and people would buy it. So as simple as that, you can start a business, but then this convening, and that's why I'm such a big fan of Kittynomics. It brings us together, allows us to share uh, knowledge and share resources. And whether, hey, it might be in person soon or being virtual, being able to talk and share ideas. But a big piece and what ACBN is trying to get really good at is that access to funding. So now you have this idea to start a business. Where do you get the resources to get the things you need to just get off the ground? And as I mentioned, I borrowed that money from my dad to get my initial uh, cleaning supplies. Luckily, it was only $250 that I needed. But sometimes the vision is bigger and you need to raise 50000 100000 Sometimes we don't have that uh, rich dad or rich uncle or rich auntie that can give you 100000 for your business idea. So ACBN, we try to support entrepreneurs with getting access to those funds. So I, want, I always like to show this slide because it shows the vast array of money that is out there. There's a big flow of money in this world, and we have to position ourselves in front of that money. You'll see in here, there are things like pitch competitions, uh, grants from the city, grants from the province, grants from the federal government, as low as $500, all the way up to over a million dollars. And so what we do on our Wednesday sessions is research what's out there and research, hey, this grant is out there, this is something that Detail Ignites was able to get or ACBN was able to get and want to support others to get money for themselves as well. But even though we're able to get money, I'm always more interested in helping others get money. So one grant that I love is the Investment Readiness Program. We were able to support 
other organizations to get it, such as Rescue Youth International, which is a nonprofit. So they run an organization that helps youth in education and the justice system, but they usually work on donations and they need to raise grants. So we were able to work with them to start a social enterprise. So they started a food truck because they had a culinary program that taught youth that were coming out of prison how to get into hospitality and you know become a chef. So now they had a food truck that allowed them to employ those youth that they were training. And then that food truck would make, make money that would help the nonprofit keep operating. So that social enterprise became a uh, revenue generating. So they made money from it in order to support their nonprofit. But then on the other side of the spectrum, you'll look at something like Custodia, which is a landscaping company. They're a for-profit company. They sell their service, but they work with seniors in the community and support seniors staying in their homes longer and help helping them with those household chores. So they operate like a social enterprise. They have a business, they make money, but they also support and reduce barriers in the community. And this is where we wanna see more of our companies going. It can't all be about the bottom line and the, the dollar and squeezing the last dollar out of our environment and out of our people. We have to be able to use our businesses to really amplify each other and support the community. So, a couple, oh yeah, this I love one. when you're on Kittynomics, Mr. Ryan. Like, I do. <laughs> it's so amazing. I uh, appreciate that. And yeah, so these are some of the grants that we've seen other students get for, um, yeah, to start businesses in the summer. I'm a big fan of Summer Company. That allows you to get $3,000 to start a business in the summer. Usually applications start around, I believe, May, so February, May. So keep a lookout for that one. ACBN, we had our SUSU grant. So we were running a SUSU, or you might know it as a PARDNA, or you might not know it. So a PARDNA or a SUSU is a collection of people that revolve money amongst themselves. So imagine every week, everybody puts in $100. So that week, there and there's 10 people. So there's $1,000 in that pool of money. So one person would get it. And then next week, again, everybody puts in 100 and the second person gets $1,000. So our organization, we were able to run this SUSU, everybody putting in $100 a week for 10 weeks. And then when ACBN got our hand, which is when you get the pot of money, we granted it out to a business owner. So these are creative ways that you can fund business ideas that you have. And of course, there's other grants like Starter Company, uh, the Laidlaw Foundation has grants for young entrepreneurs, but one to pay attention to as well is the BBPA. So that's the Black Business and Professionals Association. They have a program called BAIDS. So if you need support with doing a business plan, or if you need support with uh, doing your marketing strategy, there's resources in the community that will help get that, get that done for you, and then you're able to save your money. So always keep an eye out for that. Of course, there's a lot more grants out there. As you progress in your entrepreneurship journey, there's organizations like the Black Opportunity Fund, who's working with CIBC to create a grant. There's a wonderful grant from the Digital Main Street. It's called Shop Here. So when I mentioned Shopify and online selling and e-commerce, they will actually help you build a Shopify store for free. And I don't think they have age limits because my daughter and I, and I was gonna talk about this a bit later, but we wrote a book together and you'll see it's called Jazz and Dad Start a Lemonade Stand. Such and, a good book. Oh, thank you so much. And Shopify or the Digital Main Street, they helped us build a Shopify store. And my daughter's 10. So you can definitely tap into this. If you have an idea of something that you wanna sell, or even if you have an idea for a book, I would encourage you to write that book and take advantage of these free programs that will help you uh, get the book and get it online so that you can sell it. All right. Oh, that one came up again. Oh, did I hit that already? Hold on, how much time do we have left? There was something else I want to touch on. No, we have, yeah, you have like 10 more minutes. 
Okay, sweet. So one that I wanted to show you and that I wanted to dig a bit deeper into the DK whole process so you can see how it works. But it's important to understand there's a lot of resources being poured into the concept of social enterprise. So all those ideas that you had to make the world a better place, make the community that you live in a better place, the government wants to see more of those things get solved. And they're noticing that business is a great way to solve it. So when I talked about that sweet spot, whether you're a nonprofit organization that starts a business, that's a social enterprise, or if you're a regular for-profit business that starts to do more community work, they want to see more of those businesses grow. So they created the social finance fund, which they actually put $800 million into this pool, into this fund. And when they realized that not a lot of social enterprise were ready to take on big investments, like a million dollars uh, invested into their company, they created this investment readiness program. So now they took 50 million and said, we're gonna grant it to social enterprises so that they can get their businesses fine tuned and ready for bigger investments so that they can grow and have bigger impact in the community. So this is something to look out for as you're working out your idea, when you think about a business that you wanna operate, it's resources like this that'll allow you to grow and allow you to get money for your, your idea. So the main one you can get between 10,000 up to 100,000. So if you go to your parents and you tell them your idea and you work together as a team, I'm telling you it's possible to get dollars to support your idea. So that idea that you just put into the chat, talk, to, talk about it with your parents and think of ideas because if you can come up with an idea, even if you're doing it part-time, you'd be able to uh, possibly get some of this grant funding and then test that idea. And again, lean into the complexity. I know it might sound crazy. It might sound difficult, but that's where the growth is. That's where you learn is trying something and not working and you learning from it. Trying something else, analyzing it, fixing it, trying it again, it might not work. And then one day it clicks and you're off to the races. So I wanted to show you the history of, well, not the history, but Hold on. A bit of this, the deeper dive into how Detail Ignites works. So you can see when a student works with us in the summer, what to expect. So as I mentioned, we are eco-friendly, a convenient service. We're mobile. We go to people's houses, clean their cars in the driveway, or if they're at work, we clean the car in the parking lot, and we help youth by creating leaders and teaching them how to start their own social enterprise. Oh, that's just me or me. So these are some of our students. Again, we were doing a car wash fundraiser. So these are ideas where when we first started out, we were trying different marketing ideas and we would go door to door and hand out flyers and talk to customers. But we realized that a lot of organizations need to make money for their organization. So we would do a car wash fundraiser and that allowed us to one, people got to see us, people got to know about our company and two, we were able to raise money for a worthy cause. So we've done it for Skills for Change, we've done it for uh, Big Brothers, Big Sisters and even uh, JDRF. So various organizations were able to do uh, these fundraisers for. And oh, here's a few of them that you might mention or might notice. So this is what to expect when you're with our summer program. So we hire students. So they make about 15, I think it's $16 per hour. So they learn how to do the detailing, how to do bookings and work with uh, companies or work with clients, how to clean the cars and also how to take payments. And they also learn marketing. So you learn how to create a flyer. You learn how to make a Facebook page. Uh, even an Instagram account or different social media. And then throughout the summer, you're either marketing yourself or doing the cleaning. So this was an example of the schedule that we had. So you come to in-class sessions, you learn about customer service and detailing, and then you work with us between June and August. 
So when I talked about marketing online, we do website marketing, we do Facebook pages or social media and offline, we print flyers, we go to networking events, you get to meet people and talk to people and also car wash fundraisers, as I mentioned. All right. Oh, and I did see there's a question. All right. I'm just about done and I'll be able to answer that question. Yes. So in 2022, we had 10 locations. So we had 10 students working around the GTA. And oh, that's just our pillars. And this is what they get. So they get all the supplies, they get all the equipment, they get all the marketing, they get our admin, and they get to use our brand name. So it's valued at about 16000 almost $17,000. And they get it for free they get to work in our company for the summer without having to pay. So traditionally, other people that have bought franchises from us, they had to pay this money up front. For the students, they don't have to pay anything. They just get to work with us so that they can get the experience. So they get all these supplies, all this equipment, and all the marketing and be able to work with us. So I wanted to kind of give you that deep dive to show Something that started so small, uh, $250 uh, borrowed from my dad was able to now grow into an entity that we can give a $17,000 branded business to a student and have them become an entrepreneur in the summer. So for those that said, hey, they're ready to become a knight, we are ready for you and looking forward to seeing you in the summer. But yeah, thanks so much. Uh, did you want to go? Amazing. We have a couple of questions, Mr. Ryan. Um, one, the first question was, is Knight really your last name? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> and so I used to call myself Sir Ryan O'Neill Knight. And people would ask me, oh, are you really a sir? Are you really knighted? And I would say, yes, my mother is the queen. And she, she knighted is a queen. Her, right? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> I absolutely agree yeah. with that. <laughs> <laughs> So yes, Knight is really his last name. So that's uh, that's why I said in the beginning, I always love Mr. Ryan's last name. It's such a good last name. Um, and then second question is, how old does a student have to be to start with your business? Like Mickey is turning 12. Could she start this summer coming up? Good and so she could. Mommy. So, yeah, the youngest we've had was 10. So what they do is they still get the equipment and the supplies. And then wherever they live, they go to their neighbors to uh, ask about, hey, would they like their car cleaned? So yeah, as young as 10 has worked with us and as old, I think as 60, a 60 year old had worked with us as well. Nice. Guess where Mickey will be this summer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, looking forward to it, you'll love it. <laughs> All right, is there any other questions in the chat? That was absolutely amazing. Didn't I say every time Mr. Ryan comes on Kittynomics, he brings real life things that you can actually action today to start something. Like I, that's why we love when he comes on Kittynomics. It's absolutely amazing. You are getting a round of applause in the chat box. The kids uh, love thank you. it. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. You did amazing. Um, any other, Mickey, do you have a question? Nope. Okay. All right. Awesome. No other questions in the chat. So I'm going to wrap up because it's almost, uh, it is almost six o'clock. All right. One second. All right. So last question that we ask on every Kittynomics webinar is what would happen if kids became more financially literate? And our answer is real change that impacts the world. Look at this lesson alone, like this one with Mr. Ryan, he has showed you how you could start a social enterprise and really affect change in your community. That's what, you know, that's what we're about. We want to help you change the world for the better. And that is what we believe here on Kittynomics. So it is real change that will impact the world. So we are super happy about that. 
And that's why we call you guys our Young Financial Literacy Ambassador. What is an ambassador? An ambassador is an, is an authorized messenger or representative because you guys are all out there. And I know because I get messages from, you know, your parents, sometimes from you just saying, you know, I was talking to so-and-so and I told him about credit cards or you can talk to now somebody and tell them, I know what it's what, what a social enterprise is and I'm going to build a social enterprise business to help solve this problem in our community or in the world. Like, that is amazing. And that's what you guys represent um, as, as you guys get go forward. And that's why we believe on Kitty Nomics, knowledge is our superpower. Superpower. Because guess what? The more you share it, the stronger you will become. And the stronger the people around you will become. All right. So go ahead and share the knowledge that you have gained here on Kitty Nomics. All right. Let's do the schedule coming up for the next couple of weeks. Next week. We have Miss Natasha Allen. So remember that I said this season, we're going to be talking about businesses that kids can actually start um, and or, uh, or start to earn money. So we're going to take another route because I always thought that this is a very interesting topic. So we're going to talk about how can you earn money or scholarships through pageants. Pageants can be a very big industry and it's a, it's a great way to learn not only you know self-empowerment skills and 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 help out the community but you can earn money being in pageants so we're going to talk about that and how you can go about doing that okay so that's with uh that's with miss natasha and then the following week we have miss sandra and we're going to talk about all the money that you guys have made and you guys are going to be making and so what are you going to do with that money? Let's talk about investing that money. So we're oh, going to talk about I'm Stocks 101. Huh? I know what I'm going to do. You know which way? I know what I'm going to do with my money. With your money? Oh, okay. All right. So tell us. Oh, wait. Okay. All right. You want to tell me now or you want to let me finish this? You already know. What, am I gonna, what are you going to do with your money? I'm saving up to get a PS5. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Part of her thing, she's saving up to get a PS5. But we did use the... Um, giftingsense.org site so does it make sense so hey karen we did use the site and it did come back with a high score for the does it make sense which i didn't think it would but it I did so <laughs> she has to figure out how she's going to make this money so here go mr knight she'll be joining <laughs> um and then the following week we are going to have a super special guest on Kitty Nomics. We are going to have Mr. Wes Hall on from Dragon's Den. So remember, I've been talking to you guys about Dragon's Den. I told you to look up Dragon's Den. It's the Canadian version of Shark Tank, okay? And so Mr. Wes Hall, he's very well known in Canada, um, and he's accomplished so much. And so we're going to be talking about his journey, his investment advice that he has for all of you out there. And then you can ask a dragon. So on Dragon's Den, people pitch their businesses. They pitch their business ideas and they try to gain money for their business idea. So you're going to be able to ask a dragon about something that you have pertaining to a business maybe that you want to start or maybe some investment advice, something. So you'll be able to ask Mr. West Hall when he comes on on November 4th. So that's going to be an uber special one. We expect to have a full house for that uh, for that session. So get in early on that session, okay? All right, next screen. Okay, so remember our new shirts? This is our new shirts, our future trillionaire shirts, okay? Our future trillionaire shirts, why? Because we believe that through Kinnomics, we are going to have one of the world's first trillionaires because you guys are going to be so amazing and you've, going, you've learned so much that a trillionaire is going to come out of the Kinnomics community. So we are claiming it because if we believe it, you can achieve it and then you can wear it. And so we believe it and we can achieve it and we're wearing it and we're claiming it. So we know one of you guys will be a future trillionaire. So we are doing this to help raise funds for Kittynomics. So if you do want a t-shirt, please send me an email at Kittynomics101. And by the way, that Digital Main Street, they're helping Kittynomics out to create our own Shopify account. So hopefully we'll have our Shopify account up soon, at least by the end of the month. Um, that's the goal, okay? All right. Okay, wrapping up. We always wanna hear from you. So if you have any questions, 
at all, please feel free to send me an email at kittynomics101. Please never send me anything without your parents' permission. Always remember that. Even if you want to contact Mr. Ryan and join the, 90, the uh, detailing nights, please ask your parents for permission. <laughs> all right. And of course, we would love it if you find value in what we share here on Kittynomics, if you could please like and follow us on all of our pages, which is? Thanks for going to the Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and of course, TikTok, which I never put on there, but we do have a TikTok account. It's there. And we have a few videos. Yay. Finally. <laughs> Yay. All right. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Ryan, for coming on Kittynomics again. We love it when you are on. You always give us so much knowledge and you drop so much gems. I just love it. And of course, thank you for all the kids that joined this week. Have a fabulous week, everybody. And bye. bye.